Hi, I'm Bev Redmond, the Assistant Superintendent for Public Affairs for Seattle Public Schools. Welcome to our overview of our focus, our goals, and our funding needs. Within Seattle Public Schools, we have three areas of focus. High quality instruction, which means we create learning conditions for our students to thrive. A culture of care means that we are building healthy and safe environments for the mental health and social emotional wellness of our students. And responsiveness, which means we are partnering with our students, families, and staff to meet their social, emotional, and educational needs. Within that special focus, we are dedicated to changing broken systems and undoing legacies of racism. That means we are ensuring that students who are furthest away from educational justice have the opportunities to thrive. We have an intentional focus on African American boys and teens. We are committed to promoting a strength-based and accurate narrative about our African American boys and teens, normalizing excellence, and making sure they have the resources and support that they need to reach their fullest potential. We've set three goals. We want to increase reading for African American boys and teens by June of 2024. We also want to increase math scores and graduation rates for our African American boys and teens by June of 2024. When you take a look at our schools, we have 106 campuses, 5,955 educators, 7,413 full-time staff members, and over 50,000 students. We have 151 countries of origin, 147 languages and dialects spoken within our district, and our top five languages are Spanish, Somali, Chinese, Vietnamese, and Amharic. Hi, I'm Jolyn Berge. I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Business and Finance for Seattle Public Schools. And I'm here today to talk to you about our upcoming levies. So why do school districts need levies? School districts are funded with state, local, and federal dollars. But in addition, every three years, the district asks voters to consider renewing our operations levy and a capital levy, which are local property taxes. These levies help bridge the gap between what the state needs and what our students and schools need. So the two levies on the ballot in February of 2022 are the Educational Programs and Operations Levy, also known as the EPNO or the Operations Levy. Second is the Building Technology, Academics, and Athletics Levy, known as the BTA Levy. So on the ballot every three years are two levies with our capital levies alternating. So every three years, two levies on the ballot. Each time is the operations levy, and then one of the capital levies is on the ballot uh, with the operations levy. And this time it is BTA 5. So I'll talk to you a little bit about our current budget climate. So while the state has increased funding uh, for K-12 education, there's still places where we're not fully funded. We rely on voter-approved levies to fund about 15% of our day-to-day -day funding in the operating fund and to pay for building and maintaining our schools. Also, technology funding primarily comes from our local levies. So a couple of examples where state funding uh, still is lagging. Number one. Nurses. The state funds nine nurses for our 50,000 students. We employ 68. Another area where there's a funding gap is our special education program. So we have about 7,600 students who need special education services. Our total special education budget is about $180 million, and the state funds 82 million of that, with the rest coming from our local levies. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, the renewal of the EPNO or the operations levy. The EPNO levy renewal is really funding to bridge the gap between what the state funds and what Seattle students need. So some examples, school staff. This helps pay for our teacher's salary and our support staff, and that includes nurses and custodians. Our EPNO levy renewal supports programs like special education, advanced learning, child nutrition programs that feed our kids, social emotional supports for our students, and programs like STEM and career technical education. 
In addition, the operating levy also provides students opportunities and funding for athletics, arts, drama, and music. So what does our EP&O levy renewal cost? So this is not a new tax. If it's approved by the voters, the levy would generate $646.8 million over three years. We're on a three-year cycle, and that's typical for school districts in the state of Washington. So to give you some context, in 2019, the last time that the voters approved the EP&O levy, the ballot measure was approved with rates uh, ranging from $1.05 to $0.87 cents per 1,000 of assessed valuation over those three years. This levy, uh, which would begin to be collected in 2023, if approved, would be asking for $0.74 cents per $1,000 of assessed value. Hello, I'm Fred Podesta, Assistant Superintendent of Operations. I'm here to talk to you today about the BTA-5 levy. BTA is an acronym that stands for Buildings, Technology, and Academics and Athletics. The building part of the levy um, represents our investment in more than more than 100 buildings that Seattle Public Schools owns, more than a dozen of which are more than 100 years old, and more than two dozen of which have been designated as landmarks. We are, our goal with the BTA levy is to preserve our assets by investing in roofs, investing in building envelopes, investing in windows, and major building systems like heating and cooling, fire suppression systems, and security systems. The technology portion of the levy will help the district maintain its in considerably increased investment in technology. During the pandemic, as the district, like many others across the country, shifted to remote learning, technology was supplied to every student to participate. This will require ongoing replacement and maintenance and end user training and support to uh, keep our technology serving our students. The academic and athletic portion of the levy will allow us to make minor renovations to buildings, to support changes in educational programs, to invest in outdoor play spaces, to make improvements to our athletic fields, including lighting, goalposts and scoreboards, and also make investments in capital equipment related to arts and sciences, such as stagecraft equipment for theater programs and ventilation hoods and other capital investments to support science labs. One major construction project associated with this levy will be the replacement of the grandstands at Memorial Stadium. Memorial Stadium is a facility near Seattle Center, which we use for high school athletics and our annual graduation ceremonies. It was built in the late 40s and has not had a major renovation since. It is now time to replace the, the grandstand portion so we can continue to use this facility. We selected which projects to invest in, in in the BTA levy by working with a team of consultants to do an inventory of all our assets, to understand their current condition, develop cost estimates of what it would take to do major maintenance and other investments in building systems, again, roofs, building envelopes, windows, all the things that make buildings work. We did the same, we had a similar process to reviewing our technology needs to make sure that our technology stayed current and we made whichever investments were necessary to keep uh, our much expanded technology portfolio current. And then we worked with the board who gave us a set of guiding principles focusing on student outcomes to make sure that the highest priority projects were included for funding in the levy. The BTA 5 levy in total will uh, collect $783 million over six years. It'll start in 2023 with a, a projected 47 cents per thousand dollars of assessed value and would be expected to decrease slightly over time over the course of the six years of the levy collection. So to give a quick levy recap, what is the cost for the two education levy renewals that will be on the ballot in February? So the current rate for the EP&O and BTA levies is 95 cents per thousand. If approved in February, both measures would have a combined cost of $1.21 per thousand of assessed valuation. Seattle Public Schools has one of the lowest tax rates amongst the districts that surround us. So on your October 2021 property tax bill, the total amount for our operations, our BTA, and our BEX levies all combined was $1.84 per thousand. Seattle does enjoy lower rates. You can see that other districts around us have rates that range from $2.57 all the way up to Highline School District with a rate of $4.50. 
Renewal of the levies will ensure funds to pay for teacher salaries, key staff, and critical programs. It will improve technology infrastructure and access for our students. It will also ensure our buildings are maintained and healthy, ready for student learning. Thank you. To learn more about our budget and why we rely on voter-approved school levies, visit seattleschools.org budget. And for more information about our levy renewals, visit seattleschools.org levies. As a reminder, ballots are due February 8th.